So we've got the business overview report. So first we've got the, the uh, audit log. So I'm gonna right click on this and open in a new tab and just to check some of them out. And if I go into the new tab, let it think a bit. So now you've got your information about the users in the account. So this, if you have multiple people that are using the system, you can kind of uh, track the usage of them within it. So this isn't really related, of course, to the financial statements. It's gonna be more of an internal kind of audit uh, report log. You've got your dropdown, all users, and then you've got your users here. So I'm gonna close that back out. And then we've got the balance sheet detail report. That's the one that we've been opening most of the time for the balance sheet. We've got the balance sheet summary. Notice it's just another balance sheet here, but oftentimes you might want to start. I'm going to right click on the summary and open it up with a summary report because it's going to be more simplified. So it looks like the balance sheet here, except that we, we have basically the account types that we saw from the general ledger are now grouped together as one line item. And so it's similar to as if you took the balance sheet over here and you just collapsed, you collapsed all the, all the arrows here. So again, you can kind of construct that from a standard balance sheet. This could be good for external reporting to start off with, because you could start off with the balance sheet and then uh, dive into more detail. Next, we have some balance sheet reports. Notice that the standard balance sheet is here. The next one up top here is the balance sheet comparison. So if I right click and open that, this is just a, a, another kind of format of the balance sheet. And you can actually create this from a balance sheet. We're now just comparing two periods of time. So once you start get, getting into comparative reports, as we see when we construct these, you can start to get into a whole lot, a whole world of different reports just from a standard balance sheet as you compare month to month, quarter to quarter, this year to last year, this quarter to last quarter, and so on and so forth. And you can also subtract the two of them to see the difference and the percentage change. So those variants become almost infinite in the, in the number of reports you can get just from like a standard balance sheet layout. And then you've got the balance sheet detail, another kind of variant on the balance sheet. The summary, I'll just right click and open that one. Notice I'm right clicking and opening them up in a new window so I can come back to this window. So if I go back on over here, this is just basically a balance sheet that doesn't have the little drop downs, but uh, instead just groups by account type. And that would be like taking this balance sheet over here and collapsing the triangles, for example. So an, again, you can kind of make this balance sheet from a standard balance sheet. It's a good starting point to lead people in and not overwhelm people with data and then start from there. And then you've got uh, the, the business snapshot. If we right click and open the business snapshot. So it gives you some nice graphs and whatnot, some visuals to take a look at. Uh, previous year income comparison. So it gives you some good information, who owes me, who I owe in one window. Not the place I go most of the time, but because I would rather go to the reports themselves to find the detail. But sometimes if you get used to it, it might give you a nice a quick look at things and again obviously it's a visual thing that could be nice to look at uh, profit and loss as a percent of income so now we're on income statement reports note that the major income statement report is just the profit and loss report right here which you would think would normally have a star next to it and then these are just variants right so now we've got profit and loss percentage of, of total income this is a common way to present the profit and loss if I look at that and close the hamburger. Now we've just got this percentage over here, this column. That's a common thing to add. We will show you how to do that, but notice it's just a variant on the normal income statement that we can build from a normal income statement. Another comparison, this would be similar to the balance sheet comparison, which we can build and will do so in future reports. So you don't wanna be overwhelmed that there's a whole bunch of reports because these are basically just variants. Profit and loss detail, another variant of the profit and loss profit and loss uh, year to date comparison. So now we've got another basically comparative report, profit and loss by customer. So now you've got the profit and loss report that's breaking out on a customer you know, basis and then profit and loss by month. So another kind of variant of the profit and loss because now you're breaking that out on a month by month component. You can make that from a standard profit and loss, profit and loss by tag group so these are those tags. So if I open that up, uh, we've got the profit and loss by tag, and that's that a specialty. They don't, we don't have any tags right now, but if you're using tags, you can have a specialty kind of, of report that's being grouped by the tags. 
Pro and then here's your standard profit and loss, quarterly profit and loss summary, so another variant on the profit and loss, and then the statement of cash flows. Now, oftentimes people ask, like, why, why don't I emphasize the statement of cash flows as I do with the other major financial statement reports, balance sheet and income statement? And the reason is because the statement of cash flow, although important and a major financial statement report, uh, it's really usually made, I'm gonna make this from 010122, after you make the balance sheet and the income statement because the balance sheet and the income statement are gonna be on whatever accounting basis you're using, whether that be tax or accrual or cash. But oftentimes there's a variant from just a strict cash flow. Even if you're on a cash basis, you have to change from a strict cash basis when buying like a building or something because you have to depreciate it, which is an accrual thing. So then you've got this other report that we can look at, which is just basically cash flows. So you can think of it kind of like uh, it ties into the balance sheet, giving you more detail on the balance sheet because the end of it, 4,063.52 should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. If I pull out the trusty calculator and we go boom, calculator, and we got the cash here of 2001 plus the undeposited funds, which is also cash 2062.52, 4063.52 which is that number there. But that's not really the way you, you want to think of it. I mean, it's an ex, it is an expansion on cash and showing the cash flow, but it's really showing you the activity uh, and the cash is the lifeblood of the company on more of a cash basis. So the first part is the operating activities, which are kind of like an income statement on a cash basis, or it's taking net income and reconciling to net income on a cash based system. And then you've got investments, which is which is basically the cash flows for investments like stocks and bonds, but also uh, equipment, property plants and equipment, and then financing activities like uh, you putting money into the company, stocks and whatnot, if it was a corporation and draws or dividends and whatnot here. So we'll talk more about the statement of cash flows. It is an important report, but when you're doing bookkeeping, it's not as important at all as the balance sheet and the income statement because those are the ones that are gonna be primarily affected as you're doing the data input. And then the statement of cash flows is kind of constructed from that. And QuickBooks does a pretty good job of making one, a default one that stays in balance and ties out, but it still might not be perfect, you know, and we'll talk more about it. The statement of cash flows constructing it can be a little bit, a little bit tricky. But we'll close that out for now. So there's that one.